November is National Diabetes Month, a time to raise awareness about this serious medical condition. Dr. Nidhi Kumar is on call with the latest research on diabetes prevention and management. She joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. So can you just explain the basic difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Well, type 1 diabetes occurs when your body cannot make insulin. And so patients with type 1 diabetes require insulin every day. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the body becomes insensitive to insulin. And we don't want to forget about pre-diabetes. Now, this is when people's blood sugar is higher than normal. According to the CDC, 1 in 10 Americans has diabetes, and 50% of those people don't even know they have it. One in three Americans have pre-diabetes, and 80% of people don't know they have it. Why do we need to figure this out? Because diabetes puts you at higher risk for a stroke, heart attack, kidney disease, and permanent vision loss. Let's talk about the latest research. What are the new findings related to diet and diabetes? Two big studies came out recently, first from Harvard's uh, School of Public Health, which looked at red meat. Researchers found that just two servings of red meat a week can increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And those participants that consumed the most amount of red meat had a 62% increased risk of type 2 diabetes. The other very interesting study related to salt. You know, when we think of diabetes, we think of sugar, but researchers from Tulane found that participants that had the highest salt diet had a 39% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So maybe, you know, I mean, Thanksgiving is next week, full of, you know, <laughs> lots of different foods. We may want to sort of rethink the menu a little bit. Oh, tough time to talk about dieting. What about lifestyle changes? How much of an impact can that make? You know, what gets uh, trending so much these days is intermittent fasting. The, the uh, technical name for that is time-restricted eating. And now, you know, there's some studies that have come out recently that have looked at this. What they found is that time-restricted eating, when you're essentially eating all of your calories between a six and eight hour window, can aid in weight loss. It can improve uh, diabetes control in diabetic patients. And for pre-diabetic patients, it can also improve insulin sensitivity. So something to consider if you find that you are at risk or do have diabetes. And what about those glucose monitors? You see them popping up everywhere. Where do they play a role? Are, the, uh, are they only for diabetics? Well, you know, knowing your glucose has become one of the trendiest biomarkers these days. I mean, it's all over TikTok. Just to put in perspective, the global market for continuous glucose monitors is $6 billion, projected to be $14 billion within the next decade. But what do they do? It's unclear if they aid in weight loss. This is somewhat controversial. Many of them are marketed this way, and there are studies underway. It is unclear if they reduce cardiovascular events. Again, another way that it's marketed. But what is clear is that they can really help you tailor, tailor your, your behavior and your dietary choices if you are somebody that is at risk for diabetes or have diabetes. So what are those numbers that you are looking for? You are looking for fasting blood glucose of less than 100 or a postprandial glucose, meaning that glucose after you have a meal between 120 or 140. If your numbers are out of that range, uh, really time to you know, follow up with a healthcare provider. And the best thing to do with the data you get from a glucose monitor is to really review it with your doctor to help you make those necessary changes. Dr. Anita Kumar, thank you. Thank you.